Hello everyone, I am Alex James from Media Support LLC. In this video, I am going to talk about movie media integration with Acumatica. As we all know, we live in a cloud computing era. Companies today prefer cloud ERP as a physical setup and maintenance are handled by cloud ERP themselves. Acumatica is a cloud based ERP which offers a comprehensive ERP solution designed for small to mid-sized businesses. As we all know, customers today want faster processing of their orders than ever before, and it is impossible to meet their expectations without automation. ADI integration helps automated data exchange in ERP, leading to faster order processing, shipping, and payment cycles. At EDA Support LLC, we enable the luxury home brand to do media integration with Acumatica. I'm going to detail this presentation in five sections. First one is on connecting to Acumatica ERP. The next one is implementing a REST API for data exchange with Acumatica. Third one, inbound media processing. And fourth, Outbound media processing in the fifth section is on error handling and reporting. So let me start with the first section, connecting Boomi to Acumatica ERP. Boomi currently don't have an Acumatica application connector. Hence, you need to use Boomi standard HTTP connector to obtain or submit data to Acumatica ERP. Acumatica Users go up to protocol to authenticate or authorize any client to connect to it. And hence, uh, Boomi HTTP client needs to be configured for OAuth 2. So there are several OAuth flows that Acumatica supports. But out of all the OAuth flows that Acumatica supports, this is on a possible credentials flow and authorization code flow or two grant types that Boomi HTTP client connector supports and one of them can be used to establish connection with Acumatica. And we did a research on what OAuth flows can be used out of these two and we ended up using OAuth authorization code flow as it is more secure compared to resource or password credentials flow as the user credentials are now stored in authorization code flow. So the other advantage is the user is redirected to the Acumatica to validate the identity. So hence one of the two we went for authorization code flow. Let me show you the next uh, slide where I have screenshots of uh, the connected application screen in Acumatica where uh, uh, Boomi is registered as a client in Acumatica. And if you can see here from the screenshot on the left, you see the client names, uh, the connected application is uh, Boomi, and we've selected the flow as authorization code flow, and it gives you the client ID and client secrets. On the second screenshot on the right shows, Boomi HTTP client connector configured for OAuth to authorization code flow. So this has uh, all the access to the endpoint, the uh, authorization token, URL endpoint, and the client ID redirect URL, and all the other parameters that has to be configured for an authorization code. So the next section I'm going to talk is on Acumatica REST API endpoint. Acumatica ERP provides REST API web services to exchange data with it. Uh, as we all know, every ERP, cloud-based ERP, provides either REST or SOAP web service endpoints to exchange data with it. And in our case, we've privileged Acumatica ERP's REST API web services to send or receive data from it. And as in any other ERP, Acumatica also has various forms to, such as sales and screens, invoices, invoice forms, shipping forms, where a user can enter data and create a record. 
So each achromatic form corresponds to a specific entity and REST API can be used to access the data related to that entity. As in uh, a sales sort of form corresponds to a sales sort of entity and all the fields within it can be accessed using REST API. To get a record, get method is used. So as we all know, REST has options, has got specific XTT methods to retrieve data and send data. And a get method is used to get data from a specific system. So here, Acumatica REST API is uses OData based and it provides similar OData query options such as filter, select, expand to control the amount and order of data. And uh, to create a record, so we I just told about using a get method to get a record, and I also spoken of the REST API gets which are OData database. And on creating a record, a put method is used, and the data must be passed in JSON format. Um, on the Boomi side, as I said earlier, a Boomi HTTP client connector is being used to access. Acumatic ERP to get or send data. So we create Boomi HTTP connector operations and that has to be with appropriate HTTP methods and proper resource paths for successfully exchanging data with Acumatic ERP. So shown here in the screenshot is a web service endpoint page in Acumatic that uh, by default comes with a predefined system endpoint that provides a list of all available entities and fields accessible through the REST API. But when custom fields are added to these uh, entities within Acumatica, the system endpoint must be extended to create a custom endpoint. As we all know, though all ERPs comes with a specific set of functionalities and entities, not all business requirements can be achieved through a, a default entity, right? So we need custom fields to uh, capture uh, some of the business company specific requirements. And when such custom fields are created, then the system's predefined system endpoints has to be extended as custom endpoint to include the additional fields in the modified entities. So shown here, is a EDI 1.0 web service endpoint, which is a custom endpoint created from a predefined system endpoint for EDS specific purposes. The third section I'm going to talk about is on inbound processing. So, every trading partner sends documents to your EDS system, which has to be received, translated, and exported into your ERP. So, in this case, the documents from your trading partners must be received and exported into Acumatica. So, on any onboarding process, as we all know, the EDI IDs, the communication methods, and documents has to be exchanged and added to the trading partner, so that the EDI integration has to be set up between both the trading partners. And once the communication is set up, uh, the Boomi EDI inbound receive process can be built with uh, a Boomi process, uh, processing group, and trading partner components. If you see here in the screenshot, this is an inbound processor configured to receive documents from the sending trading partner, which would then be routed to the appropriate mapping component using the processing group. And the processing group that is configured in this screenshot is an inbound mapping router that routes the inbound document to the right map and we are using document type and the centering partner info as the key. As, so those are the two key information: the sending trading partner, the trading partner info, and the document type the two key input to the documents to a right translation map and EDS system. 
let's say you have an EDA fifty document from your training partner, then it has to be translated into a format that your ERP understands and exported to your ERP. So in the previous section, I spoke about Akimariga's REST API endpoint, and it has entity that's called specific endpoints for each entity. So the ED850 that is being received has to be translated into a JSON format and has to be sent to the appropriate endpoint using the HTTP boot method. The, uh, one of the most important things that we have to understand here is that the document has to be translated into a format which the Acumatic area we can understand. So it has to be a right JSON format as specified in the web service endpoint or in the REST API specification. And it has to be sent to the right endpoint. So after translation, using the HTTP put method, the document would then be exported to Acumatic and you would receive a 200 success response. With that, you have the shade sort of created in the Acumatic system. The fourth section that I'm going to talk about is on the outbound ADA processing. So let me start this explanation with the typical order to cache cycle. In an order cycle, we receive the inbound purchase order from the seller, I mean, sorry, from the buyer to the seller. And on the outbound, the seller returns shipments and invoice information as the input designator, eight and documents respectively. So, in this OTC cycle, the outbound documents that I just mentioned, the shipments and invoices, those information has to be retrieved from your ERP, translated from the ERP format to the required EDA format, and then transmitted to the trading partner. In Acumatica, the data can be retrieved using REST API endpoints. As I spoke in the previous section on retrieving data from the Acumatica system, you use HTTP get method. So, so the same web service endpoints can be used to retrieve data and uh, using get method to access data such as the shipment and invoices from the Acumatica system. To retrieve data from Acumatica, Acumatica has a powerful tool called Gentric Inquiries where you can retrieve the data based on specific criteria. So these inquiries can be designed to return specific fields from Acumatica entities such as sales invoices, shipments based on uh, specific criteria and conditions. If you are familiar with NetSuite, this is similar to how save searches function. So, Acumatica Generic Inquiry is a very powerful tool and we leveraged it for all of our own processing to retrieve data from Acumatica. So, so, the way we have designed the solution for our own processing is using Acumatica Generic Inquiry, which is used to retrieve a record ID using specific conditions, after which a second call can be made to obtain the detailed data of that record. So, generic inquiries are used only to get the record ID and not the complete data. So, that's the first call, whereas the second call is used to get the complete recording for all the fields. And Acumatica generic inquiry, as uh, I've shown here in this screenshot, it has got all this uh, uh, data sources, the tables that I would like to retrieve information from and how I'm going to link these tables, the relationships, and uh, what are the conditions and what are the results that you're going to retrieve from this generic inquiry. All can be configured in this Acumatic generic inquiry screen. And if you see this, there is an option to expose via OERA. So once you have the Gentric Inquiry configured in the system, you can expose it easily in OData to invoke the Gentric Inquiry and retrieve data from it. So I've stated before, it's a combination of two calls. Uh, we just receive the record ID in the first call and the second 
going to retrieve the complete data back. And as uh, the uh, rest endpoints from uh, archaeological intelligence response in JSON format, this JSON has to be then translated into an EDA format and sent to the respective trading partner. So the last section that I'm going to talk about is on Mumi integration error handling. As we all know, every integration are going to have scenarios where the integration can fail because of data issues or connectivity to endpoints. So there are uh, reasons why your integration can run out. So when it comes to EDA integration with Acumatic Arrest ERP, the, like most APIs, the Acumatic Arrest APIs also returns a 200 OK status code for successful HTTP operations. And for error, it returns a non-200 uh, status codes. So the way that we build our EDA integration is to evaluate the status code after making an API call to Acumatica endpoints. If it's 200, then it's a success response. And if it is something that is not 200, the response must be evaluated. So here is a screenshot where we have a decision sheet which checks if the HTTP status is 200. If it's 200, then if the SO query is successful, it is a stop sheet. If it's a non 200, then the response will be evaluated. So basically, Acumatica returns an error JSON, which has an error reason, which has to be captured. And that once the error reason is captured, we use an exception shape to capture the error message and then terminate the execution. And uh, once the execution is terminated, we utilize Boom Platform Alert to modify errors. The integration that we usually build is designed to terminate when it uncount is an exception. And once an exception occurs, we configure, usually configure Google Platform Alerts to send alerts to the interested recipients who would like to work with the errors. Besides API failures, errors can also occur during EDA validation, mapping, or ACE to ACFTP communication. So it is essential that all potential failure points must be properly surrounded by exception handling procedures to ensure errors are captured and alerts are triggered. Uh, so as uh, um, so this one on the Bomi integration error handling, it is also possible that if you would like to configure your custom alerts, you can use a combination of message shape and uh, main connectors to send notifications to the interested recipients. Hope you found this video helpful on all the side sections. And if you need any help on or support on integrating your EDI data into Acumatic ERP, EDI support agency can help you. We help a lot of customers, not just on Acumatic ERP, but on all the on all uh, family ERP such as NetSuite, Sage. Uh, and we works side by side to make your video implementation successful. Thank you.